to destroy all the yokes of the enemy. And what the enemy meant for evil, we're believing that God will turn that thing around and make it good. Uh, so glad uh, Brother Joe is with us. Amen. Thank God for him. Amen. He was in the hospital, but I see he's doing much better, and he's with us on this Sunday morning. Praise God. Well, let's go into the Word of God. I want to go to Psalms 1, Psalms number 1, and I want to look at verse number 1 there in Psalms 1. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Today I want to talk about the winning DNA, the winning DNA. There's something that God has deposited into you that causes blessings to flow on your life. You will attract more and more blessings in your life as you begin to serve God and commit your heart, your mind to God. But there's a winning DNA that is attached to you. Paul said it best when he said that we are more than conquerors to Christ that love us. Amen. And so we know through the scriptures that God says that we are more than conquerors. But how do we get to the place where the revelation of the word of God begins to be activated in your life? Today, we're going to talk about activating that power so you can walk in your winning DNA. Amen. What you are part of and what you are connected to is all about winning. Well, one thing that's important, praise God, uh, you must find grace in God. Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians 15, around about 10. He says, I am who I am by the grace of God. Somebody said it's the grace, by the grace of God. So that means that you don't have to work for it. It is a gift of God. We're saved not of works lest any man should boast. And just like Psalms 1 says, blessed is the man, praise God, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly and are standeth in the way of sinners, and our seed in the city of the scornful, scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Well, it doesn't look like you got to do much to be blessed. Praise God. He says you're blessed. Praise God. Just meditating in the word of God day and night. So Paul talked about his own journey. Praise God. And he says that I am who I am by the grace of, grace of God. You are who you are by the grace of God. That means God gave it to you by faith. So as believers in Christ, when you stand on the word of God, even though the enemy may fight you, praise God, all you have to do is stand in your place. Amen, somebody. It's like you've been born into a wealthy family. You have all the rights and the privileges of that wealthy family. Same thing in, in God. You are who you are by the grace of God. Are you listening? Here's the thing I want to tell you. The second point I want to bring out, number two, the grace of God is free. Somebody says free. Amen. It didn't cost you anything. The grace of God is free. There's a free gift. The gift of grace, the gift of salvation is all yours simply for the asking. There's a scripture that says Noah found grace in the sight of God. How did Noah find grace? He was walking with God. He was living for God, and God gave him a revelation. Noah, guess what? There's a flood coming. You might want to build a boat. How many think that would be important? Praise God. If a flood coming and you got a boat. Amen, somebody. Praise God. If a flood's coming, you got a boat, that's, that's a good place to be. See, the grace of God puts you where you need to be at the right time, at the right season, so you can flow into the gift of God. You can flow into the purpose of God for your life. In the third epistle of John, John writes, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. See, the key there is not just prospering, praise God, but your soul has to prosper. You see, Noah found grace in, in God, praise God, because God warned him that there was trouble coming, and God used him to build an ark for the saving of his family. The Bible says only eight souls were saved. That means all the other heathens and all of the devils, people that weren't serving God, who was doing all type of ungodly things, they were not in the boat. But God told Noah, get all the animals by two and put them in the boat. Y'all know the story, right? But he found grace in God. See, when you find grace, you find yourself being at the right place at the right time. Psalms 1 tells us about that, praise God. He says, meditate on the word of God day and night. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, praise God, walking with the Bible open all the time. Although there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. But the more you read the word of God, how many know the word of God begins to be a part of you? 
And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will bring scriptures to you. When the Holy Spirit brings scriptures to you, meditate on it. Think on that. What did God say in his word, praise him? What does God's word say about you? What does God's word say about your assignment? What does God say about your purpose in life, praise God? Because as you hear those scriptures in your mind that tells you that you're more than a conqueror, even though the enemy says you're not going to make it, say, wait a minute, God says I'm more than a conqueror. What you're doing is using the word of God to combat those fiery darts of the enemy to remind you of who you are in God. That's the winning DNA. I'm attached to success. I'm attached to that which God has purposed for my life. Are you listening to me? This thing moves, moves in, in, in dimensional praise, God. So we know grace is important, but here's the other thing that God drops, drops in you. He drops into you some mountain-moving faith. Everybody say mountain-moving faith. Mountain-moving faith means that there's some things that you need to move. How many have some things in your life that you need to move? They may not be called mountains, but to you, praise God, amen, you either got to go through them or go around them or go above them, praise God. But sometimes God said, you just said, God, just move this mountain. Move this thing that's in my way, praise God. Well, we got mountain moving faith. So we find we got grace. Noah found grace in the sight of God. And in the New Testament church, Jesus begins to tell them that if you had faith, praise God, you would say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall obey you. That's mountain moving faith. How many got some mountains you need to move? Somebody say, yes, Lord. Mountain move. Come on, speak to it. Mountain move. What do you need to move in your life? What do you need to move? Praise God. Could it be sickness? Could it be disease? Amen. Could it be bondage? All of that, praise God, your faith can move that. It happens just like Noah found grace, you find grace, and that grace allows you to step into your faith and see things move. Now, here's the thing that happens. We heard, how many heard of generational curses? Yeah. Generational curses, praise God. So he said, the same thing happened to my mama. Same thing happened to my daddy. Look like it's going to happen to me. He said, devil is a lie. I'm going to win this time. Amen, somebody. I mean, I mean, your, your, your daddy died a bad, a bad liver. Your mama died a bad liver. He said, oh, the devil going to get me with bad liver. You say, the devil is a lie. I'm breaking all generations of curses because I'm going to tap into a new DNA. That's my winning DNA. Amen, somebody. There's some sins and some things that happen in your life are because of generational curses, but we're breaking all that. Somebody said we're breaking that. Today we're breaking all generational curses. I don't care what happened to your mama, your great mama, your great granddaddy, your great, 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 great granddaddy. We're going to break all generational curses. Say not today in the name of Jesus. Amen, somebody. You can break them, glory to God. Faith will break all generational curses. Amen, somebody. Faith will break all generational curses. We're breaking all generational curses. Amen, somebody. I'm standing on the word of God. What God has for me is for me. In my season, I'm going to determine who I am by the grace of God. That's what Paul says. That I am who I am by the grace of God. I didn't just get this way. It's the grace of God. Amen, somebody. Oh, I'm glad I got the winning DNA. Amen, somebody. Let's go back to Psalms number one. Psalms number one is very important. I want you to see this, and I want you to get this revelation of what God was saying in Psalms, Psalms one. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Praise God. Not sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, what he teaches us is if someone ungodly is teaching you, it doesn't mean that they can't tell you anything good. Amen. But what it does mean, praise God, is don't follow their ways. Don't follow their practices. And so the ungodly can, can God can use anybody. I'm going to say that very succinctly. God can use anybody. But he's talking about don't walk after their counsel, the counsel of the ungodly, if it is not right because serving God is going to pay off. He says in the, verse number three, he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I'm going to stop right there, praise God. Everybody know, amen, that the tree needs some water. And if it has a consistent source of water, then it doesn't have to worry about going through a dry spout. Have you ever been in a dry place? Somebody say, yeah, I'm going through one right now. Now, some of y'all have come out of your dry spot. Do you see, praise God, Pastor, it's better now. Ooh, it's better now. Praise God. You're going through... Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, times, uh, seasons, praise God, of growth and t uh, seasons of, of prosperity, praise God. 
But the tree that's planted by rivers has a consistent source of nourishment. This is the thing. As long as I stay attached to God, tell somebody, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. As long as I stay attached to the source of God, you'll be all right because who you are attached to moves you right into grace, moves you right into favor. This favor is what we need to make it in this generation. Somebody said, thank God for favor. That favor, that favor comes on you, praise God, and all of a sudden you find yourself in places that you never thought you would be at, going where you not, never thought you would go, doing what you never thought you would do, and all of a sudden people look at you and say, how in the world did you get there? I was looking at a church just down the street, and I didn't even know this. The church is closed. So when you drive up and see Harvest Ministry still growing, it, it could have gone another way. Amen, somebody. Just down the street, this church has been there for years and years and years. Praise God, who was, who was flourishing a few years ago. It's now closed, praise God. But here we are at Harvest Ministries. We're still growing, still prospering. Amen, somebody. The lights ain't about to be cut off. Amen, somebody. The glory of God is here. Let me tell you something. As long as the glory stays in the house, I'm all right. Tell somebody, I'm all right. God, send you glory. As long as the glory of God stays in the house, then I'm all right. That's the reason why you want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. And, you know, that's the thing about being in a good church. It's like being, like, being, being that tree. So every time you come, you can get a word. Every time you come, something just to lift your spirit a little bit higher. So you know, praise God, I see where God has taken me. I'm like that tree. And the word of God that you hear begins to be that water in your spirit that pushes you to say, you know what, I can do all things through Christ. And you start quoting and say, you know what, I can do all things through Christ who give me the strength. He's made me the head and not the tail. He said, I shall be above only and not beneath. I am a victor and victorious in God because God's created me that way. The enemy can't put you in bondage. Amen, somebody. And even though you may get sick, you, you'll be like Brother Joe. You go into the hospital, you come right back out. They, can, they say, you need to go home. This, this is for well people. It's for people that are sick. You well. Get on out of here. Go on home. So you mean going on home. You're doing fine. Amen, somebody. Praise God. But sometimes people go in the hospital and they don't come out. But God says you're well watered. Praise God. You're like a tree planted by the rivers of, of water. And so the blessing is I'm attached to God's source, so I've got grace on my life, praise God. And then there's something else I want to talk about because grace brings you into a whole other dimension of favor. Somebody say favor. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, when you got the winning DA, pra, D, DNA, you got, you got this thing, praise God, uh, that, that's so powerful that connects you to God, that allows you to find grace. And then you got faith that moves mountains, praise God. And uh, faith that, that, that allows you to, to, to speak to trees. But there's, there's something I want to talk about. This, this favor is so important. Somebody said favor ain't fair. Amen, somebody. So how do you get there? It's the favor of God. Favor of God is so important. Praise God. I need favor. So we have the favor of God as well. And so we have to pray for favor. Everybody say, Lord, give me favor. Amen, somebody. When you go through a difficult time, start praying for favor. God, give me favor. Give me favor over here. Father, give me favor over here. Father, give me favor over here. Praise God. God, give me favor over here. And all of a sudden, God begins to turn things around. Like the dial on the clock, it ain't going to always be night. Amen, somebody. Say, how did you get? Some people say, how did you get to morning? I just went to sleep. So that's favor. Somebody said, just, just, sometimes God said, just sit down. Amen. I know you're worried about just sit down in the morning. Amen. It's going to be over. Hallelujah. He turns your midnight in the morning. You just lay down. So it might be 12 o'clock, but just lay down long enough. Sometimes we rush it. And that right, sister, right? We up 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm looking at us. You're looking at me. We're wide awake 3 o'clock in the morning. She say, but let's look at a little TV. Then we'll fall back to sleep. I said, you want to turn on TV? No, I want to turn on TV. Then she go watch TV. Amen come back and say, I'm ready to get in bed. And I turn the TV off. Why? Because morning coming. Coming quicker than you know. But we couldn't sleep. Amen, somebody. But the favor of God allow you to re re replenish. Amen, somebody. Somebody say, you got to replenish. That means there's a time of rest. Right? 
So we think, see, we think God wants us to go, go, go. God says, sit down somewhere. Sit down. And so I hear you. Slow down. Amen. And so what happens, praise the Lord, as you begin to move in favor, sometimes what God does, even in your favor, is to give you rest. Say, so in other words, even every car got more than one gear. Now, we don't use, use but we don't try to use but one, which is we try to go as fast as we can. Amen, somebody. But, but get stuck in the mud. Amen, somebody. They're going to say, put it in low gear. Get, get stuck in the snow. They're going to say, put it in low gear. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Why? Because all those gears are there just in case you need them. Amen. Some, I say they're there just in case you need them. We don't think about low gear. Amen. We just think about the fastest one that you can go. Praise God. But God says sometimes I have to slow you down. Oh, the favor of God is so important. The favor of God is what straightens everything out. Amen. Somebody. It's what balances everything in your life. Right? If you go through this phase, this dry phase, praise God. If you go through the dry phase, then you should smile because be smiling because God going to send the water. He's going to send the rain. Amen, somebody. They talk about the first and the latter rain. God got enough water for everybody. But everybody ain't getting the same level of water. But the favor of God, watch this, is going to give you what you need in God for the season that you are in God, right? And so in different seasons, Praise God. You need God to give you a, a strong measure of, of healing. Now, I, I like to talk about this. God's best is divine health. That is when sickness and disease can't even attach itself to your body. Some of y'all in that phase, you say, man, I ain't, I ain't been in the hospital in a long time. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. That's, that's me. Praise God. I ain't been in the hospital since I was a child. Amen. Somebody. Praise God. So that's, that's divine health. Praise God. Always walking in health. Always walking in health. Praise that's divine health. But but there's another measure of God of favor, praise, which is divine healing. Praise God. When God said, I will make your bed in the midst of your afflictions. You you've been afflicted? Yeah. God said, I'll make your bed in the midst of your afflictions. I'm about to turn this thing around. Amen, somebody. So that's your shando. That's your turnaround. That's your turnaround. The favor of God will turn around things in your life, right? So I went through this phase, praise God, when I got laid off. Amen. So I didn't have the, have the money that I, that I used to have. Wasn't broke, but just didn't have the money that I used to have. Praise God. Amen, somebody. But God made a way even in that season. Praise God. Not, not, not one light was turned off. Amen, somebody. The church light wasn't turned off. Amen. We kept on doing the work and the will of God and kept on serving God. And now God opened the door. Praise God. And then he said, said, said this is your season. Well, that's the favor of God. Somebody say, it's my season. So when folks look at you, they don't know what you've been through. They don't know the burdens that you've gone through, the heaviness that you've gone through, but the favor of God will get you out of it. Look at somebody say, I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm coming out. But I'm coming out, praise God, with a smile on my face. You know, some people that's been in the storm, they look like they've been through the storm. You know it. You know it. They like look like who done it? And boy, my God, you've been. I mean, you could see it. Praise God, you've been going through it. But some people come out and they just skip towing through the tulips. Amen, somebody. Praise God. God has has, has fixed them so that all things have worked together for their good. Amen. And that's the promise of God. All things work together for the good. To them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. I'm called according to his purpose. Favor comes to us through prayer. Everybody say favor comes through prayer. You pray for favor. Father, give me favor. Everybody say, Father, give me favor. Say it again, Father, give me favor. Right? When you're praying, pray for favor. Father, give me favor. It, it, see, it, it's a gift. Just ask for it. Father, Give me favor, and all of a sudden you walk right into it. Are you listening to me? God will give favor. Favor opens doors. God, I need this door to be open. I mean, you knock, you ask, you seek, but look like nothing moved. Favor. So I need favor. I need favor. I've asked, I've knocked, I seek, the door's still closed. Say, Father, I need favor. Right? Favor, watch this. It opens the doors, 
But favor also can shield you, praise God, from that which is a corrupter or can cause harm to you. Sometimes there's a reason why God said, you don't want none of this. Don't, you don't want to go in that door. You don't want to go in that door, right? I interviewed for a job. Man, I wanted it bad. Amen, somebody. The guy told me he was going to give me the job. Praise God. He said, you exactly what I want. I said, well, thanks. thank you. That's good. But he never called me back. He said, you exactly what we're looking for. You got the experience. You can do the job. You've done it before. But guess what? That whole department was laid off. And I was right there in Goshen. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Amen. I want to I want to look up the guy's name and say, you, you, you yet holding on? That's Carter Pierce. You yet holding on? Because you could have hired me, but you didn't. But you gave me as a blessing because all y'all got let go, didn't it? Right. So favor also shielded me from that which would have been a corrupter or caused disruption in the plan of God for my life. Uh, that which could cause me harm, right? We have the winning DNA. We say, praise God. By the grace of God, I am. Paul says, I am what I am, praise God. Noah found favor in the sight of God. This is how, what you want to do is find favor in the sight of God. When God looks at you, you don't want him to frown, have a frown on his face. Oh, th that one. Yeah, yeah, that one. You, you know, some people walk by, you say, oh, ugh, oh, my God. Why? Because you know they don't mean you no good. Amen, somebody. But with God, we want to be connected to the source, and we want God to be pleased with us. We want to find favor with God, praise God, because the faith that God puts in us allows us to move mountains. Jesus talks about if you speak to a tree, you can tell the tree to, to be thou plucked up and be thou planted, it shall obey you. If you speak to the tree, the tree that is growing perfectly can be cut down, plucked up, and can be moved out of your way. This is the reason why. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. All right? So we got to make sure we don't fight against those who God has blessed. Are you listening? The, the winning DNA requires you to be persistent. Everybody say persistent. Amen, somebody. Now, I, 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 I see some people who are very persistent. I'm not necessarily talking about that, but there are some people, and they're persistent about getting your money. Say, hey, can I get can I get some money? 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 Right? And they keep on asking until you you just just please take this money and get out my face, right? I'm not talking about that kind of persistence, right? And sometimes you do have to ask, knock, and seek. I'm not talking about that. Praise God. But sometimes you can be a worry wart too. But when I talk about persistence, I'm saying stay in the course. Amen. Some money. Being persistent. You know, Jesus gave an illustration about a woman who went to the unjust judge. And when she went to the unjust judge, her request to the unjust judge was to avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me of mine adversary. This is what she was asking the judge, to avenge her for adversary. And the Bible says he wouldn't for a while. But she said, I'll be back in the morning. All right, there she go. <laughs> Court is in session. I said, what you want before the bench? Hey, you remember that guy who took all my money? Can you, can you make him pay me back? He said, bench bill my average. You remember that guy who took all of my stuff? Can you make him pay me back? The judge says, you know, I tell you what. He going to pay you back, and he going to pay you what's right, right? And the Bible says, shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God, not the unjust judge, but shall not God, in other words, you don't compare God to the unjust judge. If the unjust would do it, what do you think God would do? He will do it. The Bible says he will avenge you speedily. So when you're walking in favor, you say, oh, this is going to take a while. I say, no, it ain't. Oh, this is going to take some time. No, it ain't because I'm going to stand in faith. I'm going to walk in favor. And all of a sudden, favor ain't fair. Somebody say, how did you do it? God moved you right to the front of the line. Somebody say, favor ain't fair. Amen, somebody. God did it. Amen, somebody. It didn't look right from the beginning. Deborah took me to a conference uh, about getting grants. After we sat through that conference, we looked at each other and said, we ain't going to get nothing out of them. 
We said, nope. <laughs> but that was then. This is now. I mean, everything that they said you had to do, we was like, okay, we ain't going to do that. Well, you got to do this. I said, ooh, you got to do this. You got to do this. In other words, they said, look, look let's say you wanted $100,000. They said, you got to have $100,000 up front before we give you any money. I said, but that's no help. You said, we coming to you for help. They said, now, this grant is uh, not like other grants. If you want this money, you got to already have some money. We want to see what you got invested. And say, well, you ain't what we're looking for. If we had the money, we wouldn't be calling you. So we looked at each other and said, that, that, that wasn't no help, was it? She said, nope. And, and the thing about it, it was right in the Legend Center, you know, uh, over there in, in, in Sherwood, praise God. They had this big old to-do, and they start telling you how you couldn't get the money. And people who could get the money, who already had money, is walking in there, and they say, okay, okay, that's what you want? Oh, we got we got 100000 Okay, you're going to give me, you're going to match? They, they was like matching and stuff. But we kept on pursue, pursuing our goal. And after a while, the right grant came that we could handle. So when you see that sign out there saying we had some renovation, that's God. God moved all the restrictions and said, Harvest going to get that money. God's people going to get that money. In other words, I'm going to position you with favor. I'm going to position you so what you need, you can get it by the grace of God. Amen. Here's the thing. Listen, let me explain something to you. People were asking for millions of dollars for their grants. We weren't even asking for just a, just a few thousand. Amen, somebody. One time, Deborah might have asked for 14,000. Amen. Praise God. But people were getting hundreds of thousands for their grants. We would just, just give us a little bit of money. They say, we ran out. I guess so. You gave out all the so-and-so. Talking about we ran out. <laughs> well, we only needed 20,000. Praise God. Amen, somebody. But what happens with favor? Now the right door begin to open. Praise God. They sent us a letter saying, we want you to come down to Tallahassee. I said, we'll be there. We had on our suit. Praise God. We was looking good. I said, you want us to come down to Tallahassee? We want to make this a historical visit. So we went down there to, to see the see all of the governor and all the people and the board. And they said, they call out and they harvest ministries. We said, right here. You know, there were some people who wasn't even invited to join. I said, will you shut up? You with somebody. Your name ain't even on the list. Just taking up all the time. I want to know. I want to. Can we do this? Like you. Listen, listen. This ain't about you thinking up something. These people already know what they about to do with this money. And this. They already know what they're going to do with this. Meeting. Don't be introducing nothing on their agenda. I was like, why is that lady doing all the talking? She with the other lady. lady like, will you hush your mouth? Will you hush your mouth? But they call Harvest Minister. And Deborah stood up. And she started talking and telling them about the church and how the church is historical. They thing when they voted, said, we're going to vote y'all in, historical. That's how we got the, got the grants. We was voted as a historical church, praise God. So God, but they invited us for the purpose. Tell us about why this church is historical, praise God. So they began to talk about the history, how they had a civil rights meeting in, the, in this church and all of the, 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 the history of, of Jacksonville that happened in this community. Listen, favor opens the right door at the right season, at the right time. You have the winning DNA, but the devil ain't going to tell you that. You are like Rocky getting beat. You can't see the end of the movie because you're getting, you must say, stay down, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky, stay down. I'm throwing in the tower. No, I, can, I can whoop him. Say, that's Apollo Creed. You can't whoop him. <laughs> and you know what? He got beat down, but he came back. Favor opens the right doors. Persistency allows you to stay the same until the end. Persistence is about a staying with something all the way to the end until you finish it. I talked about how we wanted a grant at first that we couldn't get it, but Deborah was so persistent about it, all of a sudden Deborah said, we got it. Amen, somebody. It happened because we had faith. Favor allows you to move into collaboration. Collaboration happens when God connects you with the right people to accomplish a certain goal. That's what happened. God put us in the right place, collaboration, to uh, connect with the right people. In other words, the, the, the state wants to preserve the church. They want to preserve the history. Amen, somebody. So now we can collaborate.
praise God. It's going to take thousands of dollars to refinish the church, praise God. So they were able to help us and collaborate with us, praise God. And so what I'm saying is, is your situation is not necessarily a grant, but I'm saying God will put right people in your life to allow you to collaborate. In other words, you don't have to carry all the load by yourself. Hello. You got all this load. God said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me lighten your load. This is too heavy for you. This is too heavy for you. Someone says, too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Amen. They got, listen, say, hold on, buddy. They got forklifts that can do that. Amen. They got tractor trailers can pull that. Amen. But you out there with a shovel and handling it. God say, hold on. Let me, let me give you a tractor. Help you move this situation along. Remember, Paul says, I am who I am by the grace of God. So he says in Psalms 1, let me finish. Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, right? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and that bringeth forth his fruit, and his season, his leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He says, now listen, whatever he do shall prosper, his leaf would not wither. Now, what you see in life, amen, is some people who are walking with a withered hand. Or they're walking with a limp leg. Their leaf has withered. Amen. In other words, when they should be vibrant and healthy. Amen, somebody. That leaf is withering. This is the reason why Jesus, when he saw the tree, the tree fooled Jesus. Because it looked like it should have been for a fruit. Amen. Because the leaves were green. But when he got to the tree, the tree didn't have any fruit. He said, okay, I see this tree. He said, I curse you in the name of Jesus. And when Jesus cursed the tree, the next day they saw the tree, it had died from the root. Sometimes God would allow you to curse some things in your life because it's not bringing you the fruit that it should bring in your life. If it bears fruit, well, but if it doesn't, God says cut it down, right? And so, but he says, but you, wonderful people of God, with your winning DNA, whatever you do shall prosper. Are you listening? You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, praise God, to bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He says, but hold on, the ungodly are not so. Everybody ain't going to get this. Somebody say, faith ain't fair. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff of the wind driving away. But that's not you. The saints of God got a winning DNA. That's not you. Praise God. You tap into your soul. Say, I got a winning DNA. If things not working, say, God, give me faith. And all of a sudden, God start opening doors. God makes a way out of no way. When it looks like you couldn't, couldn't, couldn't find a breakthrough, praise God. He breaks those generational curses. He brings you into blessings. He brings you into increase. He brings you into your wealthy place. Now you can sit in heavenly place and say, yeah, we bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, we bad. Say, who you think you are? Say, we bad. You get your swag back. Amen, somebody. Say, we bad. Amen. We walking like we're walking. We talking like we're talking. We doing what we're doing. It's by the grace of God. Somebody say, hold on. The best is still yet to come. Amen, somebody. The best is still yet to come. So you ain't seen nothing yet. He says, I'm going to cause you to ride upon the high places. Let me tell you something. When we got on that plane, that plane went up like that. But after a while, it kind of leveled up. So you can be like this. That's a blessing because you're on your way up. But some say, I'm on my way up. <laughs> hey, I'm on my way up. But after a while, the plane starts going like this. Woo, but we, we walk, we walk to my walk in it. Lean with it, rock with it. After a while, you're walking in it, praise God. That plane is flying straight. You've already reached the top. Amen, somebody. Somebody's better at the top. Amen. Now the plane is flying straight. It's, and you know when you're about to come down because it starts tilting down a little bit. You see the angle of the plane going down just a little Little, little, little lower uh, as it travels, praise God. It's going real smooth, praise God. But you know what's a blessing? When you can ride on those planes and they don't have any turbulence. Because sometimes they have, any, have some turbulence. This trip, we have no turbulence. The, 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 when they have turbulence, the, the police, the, um, I'm saying not the police, but the pilot come on and say, hey, put on your seatbelt. Amen. It's going to be a little rough up here. Sometimes when you go, when, even in the high places, it's a little rough. Hey, I come on, I said sometimes it's a little, don't think that every day going to be, you're going to be smiling every day. Every now and then you're going to have a serious look on your face. Said, in the name of Jesus, God, keep this plane up here. Yeah. Sometimes God going to go take you through some, some things. You're going to have to pray your way through it. God, and keep watching over the pilot, pilot, let him see everything. Especially any other planes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, let, let him see everything. Let his eyes be wide. Don't let him be sleepy. 
God, don't let the, plant, the pilot be sleepy. Amen, somebody. Whatever he got to do to stay awake, keep him alert. Amen, because I got to, if I go up, I want to come back down easy. <laughs> I say, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? All right, so let's talk about this, praise God. He says, the ungodly not so, but they're like the wind with the, tra- ch- the chaff drive away, praise God. And he says, therefore, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. And I want to pause here because you're going to see the but. God, know your way. This is the favor. This is the DNA of winning, praise God. He says, he knows your way. He's with you in the storm. He's with you through the flood. He's with you in the fire. He's with you in the test. He's with you, praise when you're well. He's with you when you're sick. He's with you when you're up. He's with you when you're down in the valley or the mountain. doesn't matter. He's still with you. So wherever state you're in, the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. I've got to be content with God. But godliness with contentment is great gain because my reward is coming and it's got my name on it. But he says, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Stay with God. Amen, somebody. Stay with God. That's where your blessing is, staying with God. So we talked about, Paul says, I know who I am. I am who I am by the grace of God. Number two, we says, praise God. The grace of God is free. Come on, say it's free. The grace of God is free. Number three, we found talked about Noah found grace in the sight of God. That's what you want to. See, when you have favor with God, he can also give you favor with man. Noah found grace inside of God, but that favor that Noah found saved his family and saved his own life. We talked about faith move mountains. Sometimes, praise God, you have to move mountains. What do you need to move in your life? Your faith can move it. Push it out of the way. I talked about praise. At first, they said, you not. I mean, they basically gave all the, all the requirements. Said, You're not getting no money right now. Amen, somebody. But now they send emails to Deborah saying, there's a grant here, there's a grant here, there's a grant. You should apply for this. And there's, I mean, it's just a different season. Instead of telling me what I can't get, they're telling me what we can get so that God can make a way out of no way. We talk about faith, praise God, can move trees for, even from the root, praise God. Jesus said, tell it to be plucked up and be planted. That's God's power. And any generational curses, I don't care what it is, we can put in the blood of Jesus on that thing. Somebody say the blood. The blood. The blood's going to break it. The blood's going to break it. We talk about favor. Favor comes through prayer. Don't forget to pray. If you don't take anything out of this message, remember to pray for favor. When you wake up, say, Good Father, give me favor today. Amen, somebody. Father, give me favor today. Praise God. All right? So the favor of God, it comes on you. You walk in it. You experience it. You become it. It is who you are. It is favor. Amen, somebody. We talk about how favor opened doors in your life. Praise God. And then I want to talk about how favor also can protect you, praise God, from that which will destroy you. God, Some things God hold back from you because that's not where your blessing is. The will of God is the safest place in my life. I got to be in the will of God. I got to be where God called me to be because that's where my blessing is. And then lastly, praise God, one of the last things we talked about is being persistent. Listen, persistency is, is having the, 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 the dog in you. We say, I'm not going to give up. Amen. Is there any dogs in the house? <laughs> You got to fight. Amen, somebody. You got to I said, I want God to do God, so you got to fight. Amen, somebody. So you can read the scripture. You will not need to fight sometimes, God, so you got to fight. You got to put up a spiritual fight. Amen, somebody. If the enemy come in, you got to put him in his place. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you got to bind the devil. You're in a fight. Amen, somebody. That, that's the struggle, right? All right? So you got to say, I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen, somebody. But I'm going to be persistent. Amen. If you give him an inch, you'll take him out. The Bible, do I have Bible? He said, the Bible says, resist him steadfast in the faith. That's the persistence. Resist him where? Steadfast. Don't give him no space. The Bible says, give no space to the devil. We've been giving him too much. Oh, you can take the backyard. He'll take the front too. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You can have the backyard. I ain't going to worry about that. I don't care about the side. Yeah, you listen. If it's yours, you want it. Amen. I don't want to care about the, I don't care about the backyard. He said, you don't, you don't. Okay, he gave us a backyard. Let's see if we can get it front. <laughs> you know, before you know, he don't took the whole house. Amen. Somebody. I said, before you know, he don't took the whole house. I told you I rode by the church down the street. The church grass growed up. The church closed. Like, what happened? The devil don't took the church. Amen, somebody. 
If he take the church, he'll take the neighborhood. If he take the neighborhood, he'll take the city. Amen. You can't just bow down and let the devil just have it because he asked for it. Talk back in here. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you got to fight for what's belong, what belongs to you. Amen, somebody. Put up a spiritual fight. But you don't have to fight alone. Those that be for you are more than those who be against you. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen, somebody. We found favor in the hand of God. Favor in the hand of God. I've got the winning DNA. Heads about eyes are closed. Hallelujah. I got the winning DNA. Yeah, yeah. I got the winning DNA. I'm believing God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. Deborah, come on, lead us in prayer. I'm gonna, I need to get, get some power up in here. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on to the altar. Y'all want to get closer. We're going to tap into this. I'm so glad that I have the winning DNA. Thank you. The enemy don't want you to know that. Glory to God. The Bible declares that he blinds the minds of those lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them and they should be saved. Hallelujah. He don't want you to know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that loves you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we're taking our winning season today. Thank you. I'm a winner through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm an overcomer. I'm a victor. Glory to God. The enemy shall have no power over me shall have no dominion in my life. Glory to God. I'm putting him under my feet. Glory to God. I'm using the name of Jesus and he will flee. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you brought to knowledge today that we're winners. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That we're the head and not the tail. Glory. Hallelujah. That you've given us victory over every situation that you will cause us to triumph over every challenge, every difficulty, every trial, every tribulation. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, that you will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That at the name of Jesus, he will fall back. At the name of Jesus, he will flee. Oh, we thank you, God. We lay everything on the altar, God. All of our challenges, hallelujah. Those of us who are struggling, hallelujah, on the inside. Struggling, glory to God, with thoughts on the inside. Hallelujah, we claim victory over them today. Hallelujah, we declare peace in the name of Jesus. We declare peace in the midst of a storm. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Those of us who are sick in our bodies, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. We break every generational curse. We break every generational curse in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We apply the blood today. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Glory to God. And after we get up from this altar, we declare that we are healed. Glory to God. We are the healed of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you now. In Jesus' name, people of God, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah for the victory. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I got the winning DNA. Praise God. Stop the recording. We worship you in the truth, yeah. 